The next item of business is consideration of business motion 7629 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau on changes to this week's business. Any member who wishes to speak against the motion should press their request to speak button now. And I call on George Adam to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. Thank you, Minister. No member has asked to speak against the motion. Therefore, the question is that motion 7629 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. The next item of business is topical questions. And at question number one, I call Brian Whittle. Thank you, Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the reported comments by the Auditor General for Scotland suggesting that Prescott Airport will continue to require millions of pounds in continued public funding while it remains in public ownership. Minister Ivan McKee. Uh, no loan funding has been provided to Prescott Airport since 2019, and the budget makes no provision for additional loan funding, as we do not envisage any being required in uh, 2023. 24. Brian Whittle. Uh, I thank the Minister for that answer, but when the Scottish Government bought Presswick Airport in 2013, it was right to do so. It was a necessary step to protect this valuable national asset and help to sustain thousands of jobs in the local economy. Since then, the airport has received over £43 million in loans, of which £31 million has already been written off. Last week, the Auditor General gave evidence to the Public Audit Committee, saying he expected that millions of pounds being spent every year to sustain the airport would continue for as long as it remains in public hands. Does the Minister believe this is sustainable, either for the airport or the public finances? Minister. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure on what basis the Auditor General made that statement, because for the last three years, uh, the business at Presswick Airport has been, uh, has been profitable. Um, as I've indicated, we've no indication that there will be any further additional funding required uh, at, uh, in this financial year, and we expect that profitable position to, uh, to continue into, into the future. Brian Whittle. Again, I appreciate the Minister's answer. I think Presswick Airport has got immense potential. I think we agree on that as a base for Scotland's growing space sector, as a cargo hub, as a research space, even as an aircraft recycling facility. But to achieve these goals requires investment far beyond what the Scottish Government can possibly commit. The airport needs and deserves substantial private sector investment that secure its future, create jobs and grow the local economy. Given the Scottish Government's unenviable record of uh, overpromising and underlivering with other public sector buyouts, does the Minister accept that the greatest value for taxpayers and Scotland's economy from Presswick Airport can be achieved for returning it to the private sector and not leave it relying on public sector funded life support indefinitely? Minister. Uh, I agree that uh, the, the airport should return to the private sector when we've got a buyer that's able to. Uh, um, to, to, to purchase the airport with a, a solid business plan and is able to fund uh, the investment that's required. I, I'm glad the member acknowledges that we were correct to buy uh, the airport back in uh, 2013. Um, he'll know that at that time the airport was uh, losing money and, of course, a matter of record, the Scottish Government put in uh, funds up to uh, 2018. But since 2019, as I've indicated, the business has been profitable and uh, the Government hasn't put any more funds. And we expect that to be the situation going forward now that the business is back uh, being profitable with a significant increase in, in turnover over that, uh, that period of time. But as I say, we are um, interested here from anybody, who, any prospective buyers, who would um, come forward and have a conversation about the future of the airport because, as the member rightly identifies, the future of the airport will be in, uh, in private sector hands. Also worth noting that uh, the Auditor General made the comment um, uh, on his appearance on the committee uh, recently that, uh, and to quote, we haven't formed an overall value for money judgment on Presswick specifically. So I know there was an overarching comment he made about public sector interventions, but that's what he had to say on our intervention on Presswick Airport specifically. Siobhan Brown. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I am grateful the Scottish Government saved Presswick Airport in 2013, and over the past decade we have seen the surrounding areas support over 4,000 jobs and attract global companies to base themselves at Presswick uh, as one of the leading aerospace hubs. Presswick Airport was also a really integral part of the £80 million Ayrshire growth deal, and although the Scottish Government still seeks a buyer for the airport, does the Minister agree that it is really important that any such buyer of the airport supports the long-term economic vision for the area. Minister. 
Yeah, I think the member is absolutely right. Um, she correctly identifies, as, as all members that represent there, recognise the value of that aerospace and space uh, cluster around the airport, uh, the, the, the value of the, the, the Mangata inward investment that was recently announced is, is testament to that, with almost 600 high-paying jobs uh, in the space sector and other investments from private sector businesses that are taking place um, around that, uh, that, that cluster. So we think that's hugely important, and it's important that the future of the airport is considered in the round with their aspirations. Uh, for Ayrshire and for Scotland as a whole in the aerospace sector and in the space sector going forward. Willie Rennie. I'm a bit puzzled about what the Minister is actually saying about the Auditor General. He seems to be in conflict with what the Auditor General has said. So could he clear up what discussions he's had with the Auditor General to resolve that difference of opinion? And can he explain why that's come about? Minister. Um, I haven't had any conversations with the Auditor General. I'm, uh, I had a look at his, his uh, audit uh, committee appearance uh, just before I came down, um, and I've looked at the numbers on Presswick Airport, and I can state the facts, and the facts are that no money has been put in since 2019. Um, the business has been profitable for the last three years and continues to be profitable, and we've no expectation that that will change this year. So, as I said, that the basis on which the Auditor General made the comment that millions of pounds are still being used to support the airport on an annual basis. Um, I'm not clear where that's come from. Question number two, Katie Clark. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to ensure teachers are equipped to discuss and address the issue of extremist online misogyny with pupils. Cabinet Secretary Shirley Ann Somerville. We are committed to ensuring all pupils receive high-quality education on relationships, sexual health and parenthood, which includes the recognition and rejection of misogyny. <clears throat> Through Curriculum for Excellence, young people should experience factual and objective learning that enables them to make informed decisions and choices that promote and protect their own and others' well-being. Learning is supported through provision of updated resources, including RSHP online resources, and will be further supported through our established work on personal and social education and gender-based violence in schools. This work contributes to the delivery of Equally Safe, Scotland's strategy for preventing and eradicating violence against women and girls. Katie Clark. The EIS Union has issued guidance to teachers looking to tackle the harmful effects of online misogyny on young people, as some misogynists continue to gain popularity on online platforms. Will the government make further resources available to ensure that all teachers have access to equality and diversity training, which explicitly includes content on gender equality, tackling misogyny and addresses violence against women and girls? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I welcome the, the ongoing uh, commitment and work by the EIS and indeed other unions on this important issue. But I hope I can reassure um, uh, Katie Clark in uh, as much as we uh, already have resources um, available to assist teachers. Um, one resource, for example, rshp.scot contains lesson plans, activity resources and information for parents and carers to help them reinforce the messages at home. Um, as the member would uh, expect, um, this is available um, in an age-appropriate fashion um, going through um, a, a child's um, education. Um, and we are, of course, again looking to see what more needs to be done in this area. Uh, there's been the review um, of uh, PSE, personal and social education, uh, which had uh, recommendations about what more could be done. Uh, good progress is being made on delivering those uh, recommendations. Uh, but I would agree with the member there is absolutely no room for complacency on this. Uh, misogyny, uh, misogyny is a societal problem that we have. Um, and as schools being part of our society, Society, um, it's important that they play a role um, in that to ensure uh, that both young women and men uh, receive uh, the, the type of support and learning uh, which they should have uh, to allow them, um, as I said in my original answer, to make informed and educated decisions. Katie Clark. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the specific problems in schools and I'm sure will agree that teachers have an important role in addressing these issues. The EIS are calling for the development of more specific 
anti-sexism learning in the curriculum and for issues like misogyny to be explored through existing subjects. Will the Cabinet Secretary look at updating the curriculum for excellence so that it includes specific aims around tackling misogyny and promoting gender equality in schools across all subjects? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, I'm happy to look at any and all uh, suggestions, either directly from Katie Clark or from the EAS, um, and indeed other uh, members and stakeholders um, on this issue. Uh, clearly, in Scotland, we don't have um, a, a national curriculum, so it is up to schools about what resources they use. Uh, but we do all have to work together to ensure that staff are supported, to ensure that they have the best possible resources in front of them, uh, the most up-to-date resources, as this uh, clearly is, given it's an online space um, in particular that we're talking about today. Um, a, a real uh, obligation on us to keep up to date with developments um, on that. So I'm, I'm happy to look with that. Obviously, um, I already chair um, a, a task force uh, looking at what can be done around some of these areas, uh, many more beside, but particularly um, on this area. Um, and the unions are involved in that, particularly the EIS. But I'm uh, happy to look at further suggestions um, on what could be done to see if there are any gaps in provision or indeed any updates that need to be done on this. Brian Whittle. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, social media means that any abuse of this kind can follow uh, pupils home. One of the Cabinet Secretary agrees with me that mental health support is crucial in tackling the effects of this kind of abuse. And if so, what are the Scottish Government doing to ensure that support is available for all? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, uh, Brian Whittle raises another really important aspect um, of, of this, which um, has uh, changed markedly since any of us um, were at school, and that is that ability um, for bullying and harassment, sexual harassment, misogyny, to follow um, a, a, a uh, a person home, a young girl home um, from school. When it comes to particular to mental health, you'll be aware of the uh, counsellors um, that we have uh, provided funding for for local government um, in our secondary schools, and uh, those are in place and play an important part. Obviously, there's wider uh, support um, around uh, CAMS, but it is very important that we have an environment uh, not just supporting mental health, but also um, overall wellbeing and um, a a provision within schools that ensures that young women and girls feel supported and able to come forward uh, to be able to re re report um, any issues that they are having in schools and for them to um, absolutely have the belief that action will be taken upon that. But again, I, as I said to Katie Clark, I'm more than happy, particularly on this issue. I hope it's something that we can come together on. If there's uh, suggestions around this that Brian Mittal would have, again, I'm very happy to work cross-party on this. Thank you. That concludes topical questions. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 7608 in the name of George Adam on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a timetable for the Stage 3 consideration of the Hunting with Dogs Scotland Bill. And I ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press their request to speak button. And I call on George Adam to move the motion. Thank you, President Officer, and moved. Thank you. No member has asked to speak against the motion. Therefore, the question is that motion 7608 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. The motion is therefore agreed. We're just going to pause briefly as we wait for those involved in the debate to take their places.